Let's extend upon this idea of a one-dimensional array for a moment. So first of all, if I had an array such as uh, shown below, um, what you see is five elements. Now currently they have no values. Now we could use this the squiggly bracket mechanism to fill out all those values in the definition statement. Unfortunately, if we're dealing with say a large scale array like 10,000 items or something like that, we don't want to do it like that. We want to do something much more simplified. So let's assume or let's let's think about an opportunity where we want to set all the values to one or one all the elements to one value. In this case, we'll set them all to zero. Of course, the easiest mechanism to do this is a loop. What kind of loop? Well, in this case, we know exactly how many times we want to loop because we know the size of our array. We know how many elements there are. So I'm going to use a counted loop. So something like this. For int i equals zero, such that i is less than. Now I could just put in the number five then. But the problem is, what if I want to change my code later on and I want to manipulate that five to a ten or I want to be able to or I redefine its size, or that 5 is not a 5, it's a variable, it's not a literal value. So instead of using uh, the actual number 5, what we're going to do is we're going to use the length property of the array. So I would just say nums.length. This will always return to me the exact number of elements in the array, not how many have data just the number of elements. So we got to be careful if we haven't filled up the array completely or if there's gaps somewhere in there, we have to be conscious of this when we're going through this for loop or another for loop that would uh, go through the loop, go through the array itself. Now I'm just going to increment my i value. Inside of here, um, all I need to do is access each nums element and assign it the value zero. nums square bracket i equals zero. First time through the loop, i is going to be zero, second time one, second, third time two, and so on and so forth until it gets all the way through. And that will initialize our array to the value zero. So every element will have the value zero. Now if you wanted to change individual ones, that, you would just do that after the for loop to whatever specific element you need. Now this is the basics of a regular for loop. We are going to extend upon this. And the way we're going to extend upon this is we're going to add another dimension. So this is what's known as a one-dimensional array, or 1D array. We're going to create a two-dimensional array. So if this one has nothing but rows of data, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, we're going to add columns as well. So let's look at it like this. So we have, we're going to call this one nums2, just to keep it simple and consistent. So the way we're going to show this is going to look very similar. We're going to have five rows. Of course, we could have as many as we want. And we're going to just have three columns. So when we number them, we still number the rows in the exact same way. Nothing's different. Columns, we number from the left as well, going to the right. Zero, one, and two. This looks an awful lot like a spreadsheet or a spreadsheet that you would see in Excel. So for example, in Excel, the, the columns are always uh, labeled as A, B, C. And here, we're labeling them as zero, one, two. So if I want to refer to a specific cell, let's say I want to refer to this element right here. We refer to the row first, so this is row 3, column 2, 3, comma 2. Right? That would tell me this is that element, that's the address of that element. So I could obviously modify that data, or I could retrieve that data, depending on what my purpose is at that given time. So how do we actually define this array? Well, the good news is it's pretty simple and pretty straightforward. It's almost identical to the previous statement. So I can say int square bracket. This time I'm going to put a comma in there. Of course, if I wanted to, I could extend this idea of a two-dimensional array to three dimensions by adding a depth layer. So it would be more like a cube. We're not going to do that right now because it's just overcomplicated for what we're trying to do. Uh, but it does work. All you'd have to do is add in more commas here for every other dimension that you want. So now that I have this, I need to give it a name, nums2 equals new int. Now inside the brackets here, the square brackets here, I have to specify the size of each dimension. So the first dimension is our row. So this has five rows. Our second dimension is our columns. How many columns do we have? Well, we have three columns. No, no mention whatsoever of the index values, like the 4, the 2, at all. That's not relevant here. All we care about is the total number of rows and the total number of columns. 
If I want to know the total number of elements, all I'd have to do is multiply those two numbers, 5 times 3, that gives me 15 total elements. Okay, so, so far so good. We have, a, we have the 2D array defined. What if we wanted to do something similar to the for loop in the previous example of the one-dimensional array in two dimensions? Well, it's actually pretty straightforward. It's pretty much the exact same thing. But the difference is, is that if we only use a single for loop, all we're going to be able to look at is either the rows or the columns. We won't be able to look at both at once. So what we need to do is we need to extend this to handle a nested for loop. So we're going to look at both rows and columns at the same time. So if I want to create my for loop, I'm going to use a bit more descriptive names for this for this example, so you understand where the concepts are or where the uh, values are coming from. Instead of int i, I'm going to use int row. And we're going to give it the value zero, so it's going to start at index zero. We're going to keep looping as long as row is less than nums two dot huh. I can't use length because there's two dimensions here. Which length would it give me? The rows or the columns? There's actually a function call that we can use to retrieve a specific one. So I'm talking about rows here. So I want to know the number of rows. If I look at the definition of my 2D array, which index or which sorry, which uh, which value represents the number of rows? Well, it's the first one. So which dimension is the first dimension? So I want to use get length. This is a function call, so it's rounded brackets, and I want the first dimension. So in the dimension zero, so it's going to give me the five. If I put a one there, it's going to give me a three. If I have a more than two dimensions, I would just use con uh, different uh, index values as I go on. So now that I have that, I can just increase row by one. Same as always, nothing different. Now, of course, I need to do the same thing for the columns, for int column. I'm just going to use call equals zero, such that call is less than nums2 dot get length again oops length this time we're talking about the second dimension so I put a 1 here column plus plus so I have my row and I'm going to have my column. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to use almost the exact same statement as above, nums i equals 0. But this time it's going to be nums 2, square bracket row, comma column, equals 0. Now we just need to close off our two squiggly brackets. Now let's look at how this actually works. It's saying, okay, row on the first time through the loop has the value 0. Then it comes in and it does the incomplete inner loop. So it's going to go 0, 1, 2. So it's going to go 0, 0, 0. Then it goes down to the next row. And then it looks at each column one at a time. 0, 0, 0. And this process continues. Top to bottom, left to right. And then that's it. If I want to access a certain element, again, it's the same idea. I just need to know which row and which column I'm actually going to deal with. And that's two-dimensional